Okay, we are gonna officially start, uh, get the recordings going, get the questions uh, ready for when the time is it. Uh, so, hello everyone and welcome to Thales Community Call. Um, it's pretty crazy to us to think that this is the first uh, community call of uh, 2022 and that Thales as a project is more than one year old by now. So happy birthday. Thales, <laughs> but it that happened a few months ago, but it's, but still, uh, it's nice to, to remember that. So I want to start by thanking all the Cori contributors for, for their hard work, like for, for carrying us uh, to this point, uh, obviously to the Thales Council for their continued support, and of course the Thales community, the Titans, for continuing this journey with us while we explore like all the new possibilities uh, with Parimutor Markets. And I must say that things are, are starting to fall into place. So you, you'll see soon when, when we go uh, like topic by topic. I hope you have the, the agenda like at hand. If not, uh, can someone please uh, paste it from the announcement into the, the community uh, chat so people are aware of what's next. So um, first, I, I'll start with a, a, a quick uh, trip summarizing the development since the last community call that was uh, held in, in mid-December. Uh, it's, uh, it's pretty crazy. I was DMing with other Cori contributors, like saying uh, we, we've been uh, without a community call for, for three months or something like that. And that's because we, we introduced the Thales Council governance calls. Uh, and we've been uh, relying on those for, for some of the information, but we, are, we want to uh, get back into these uh, uh, community calls and, and, and start doing uh, this more often. So. Uh, as this is going to be a long call, I'm going to be a brief recap. <laughs> this is going to be kind of a long one, but I will try to go as fast as possible. If you don't catch anything or, or something, you don't catch it. Uh, remember that there will be a recording for this. So a recap since mid-December, a new council was approved with seven seats and they voted the tip 11, uh, like uh, the authorizing or like the AMM beta release on optimism and tip 12, formalizing the optimism deployment. Then, uh, to start the year, we started with the first incentivized rounds for the AMM on Optimism. Uh, we'll get more details about the AMM performance after this recap. Uh, it's part of the agenda. Then we, we got the first Thales Council governance call. And they, they, they showed their commitment to make open calls. Uh, they discussed meta governance uh, things and operational procedures. And, and in, most important, tip 18 to post uh, synthetics on going distribution and tip 19 that they introduced uh, some changes into the AMM and the safe box uh, smart contract. And this, I think this is very important it, and it's not uh, uh, too talked, uh, but uh, the safe box, is, it's, uh, it's kind of gathering 1% uh, of all the fees uh, through the AMM. So this is a, it's very important as the safe box is a contract that uh, basically can, can act as a, as a saving account or like a, of all the fees on, or, or related to all the uh, inputs uh, of other possible fees mechanisms that, that uh, Thales developed. So this is important to keep in mind. Uh, after that, uh, at the end of January, we got the Tale of Thales uh, launch, the game uh, launch. Uh, this is a very, was a very funny initiative, championed by Sanguin. Uh, we got great feedback from the community and, and, and from other projects also that really want to get involved into this and, and, and kind of uh, be part of the expansion of Tale of Thales into the, into the metaverse. We, I think we'll get into that uh, in the next community call. And also during this launch, we, we, we launched it with uh, some Easter eggs and speedrun competition. The, the, the engagement from you, the community was was awesome. So we really thank you for that. And, and the current stage of this is that uh, Sanguin is doing research with the uh, Cori contributors about how to best connect in-game interface with smart contracts on Optimism. So that's uh, a piece of alpha for you that the uh, Tale of Thales uh, could also like in the near or mid to near uh, term be, be a, a platform and, and UI to, for you to interact directly with the Thales uh, parameter markets. Then we, we got the second Thales Council governance call and, and tip uh, 17 was approved for gamified staking, tip 20 for token migration and tip 23 for LP incentives on Juni. Then uh, the token migration was carried away, so uh, it was auto-migrated all staked, scrolled, and bested rewards to L2. This was a flawless uh, coordinated effort, I must say. I'm, I'm, I'm really proud of all the, the work that uh, was done regarding, uh, obviously, communication on this, but especially uh, development. So kudos to, kudos to 
Tales developers, they, they, they did something <laughs> and they did something very well. So kudos guys. And also this saved gas for everyone. So I think it's very important to, to highlight it. This was a coordinated effort and the community was, uh, was top notch uh, in their support with this. The devs did something, right Pat? <laughs> okay. Uh, next, after this, uh, we, we got the gaming phase staking that uh, uh, added a bonus for phase staker if they also staked SNX, they traded on the AMM, or, or they participated in Thales Royale. So uh, uh, this this initiative uh, changed uh, the game for saying so about about the staking. So uh, we, we are still iterating over this uh, initiative, but uh, but we are we have gotten like uh, I think good good results with it. Uh, next, uh, we, we started Thales Royale uh, seasons, uh, like uh, started with the first six, and this was uh, given the, the, the great uh, I don't know, uh, success from uh, Thales Royale uh, testnet iteration uh, during last year. Uh, so we decided to run uh, six seasons, like scheduled. We are now about to finish the season number four. I think we, we're going to have two winners for this, uh, this one. Uh, after that, we, we got we got integrated with Gelato for the LFP incentives and the, their Uni product. And after that, we got the third uh, Thales uh, Council uh, governance call. And Tip Twenty Eight uh, was discussed about exotic positional market. That's a very interesting topic that we're going to be touching today. Also, Tip Thirty about the AMM uh, third version update that's still pending voting. And Tip Twenty Nine about the Thales Royal passes. We developed Thales Royal passes uh, as NFTs on optimism. Uh, this was introduced in some UI changes. Also, uh, you can find them displayed on Kixotic uh, market of uh, on, on Optimus market for NFT, NFTs. And this is the start of experimentation when NFTs on, on Optimism. We'll, we'll, we'll go uh, a little deeper on this. Red has some surprises for you. Uh, after this, uh, we, we, we started the Olympus Pro integration. So now you can find Thales uh, Rapid ETH bonds on Optimism. And so far, uh, the, well, the, the idea of this is that it has multiple benefits, both for, for the community and, and also for the protocol. So, so far, we uh, Thales has accumulated uh, around $40,000 of protocol owned value. This means that Thales is owner of uh, around 40,000 um, USD uh, equivalent of LPs uh, since the beginning of this iteration. So I think that's, that's very good. Then uh, we got the tip 33, formalization of the new DAO token. And uh, this is the stage that we are in because this started the, the sex listings. <laughs> this is always going to be funny to say sex listings, but I don't know how else to say it. And dashboard updates like CD on Sapper and whatnot. So this is uh, like a brief of what, what we've been doing. Yes, yes, big penny, sex listing, but with a C, like big C. Um, so this is a kind of a brief of what we have been doing uh, during the last uh, two to three months. And we'll be sharing plus everything that we'll be sharing today uh, with you. So uh, this is a brief and to just not take uh, too much time of it. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll continue uh, with the, what the gather us together and, and this is the current development. So I would like to uh, give the, 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 the word and, 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 and the speaking uh, pass for saying so to, to Dan and, and Leif, who both uh, uh, they, they are going to present the AMM and their performance and, and then continue from there. Yeah. Dan, and also, there? Um, just to say, like Leif is our yes. newest member and we want to welcome oh, him man. and introduce him oh, to man, our you're right. community. Yeah. <laughs> please, please do so, please do so, Pat. Sorry, I, I just missed that. Hello. Yeah, maybe Leif who can introduce himself, right? Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, Nathan, are you hello, 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 everybody. Uh, let's hello, Mike. Uh, it's great to join uh, the uh, growth team. And uh, yeah, I have uh, uh, quite a long experience about uh, software development and uh, data engineering. And uh, yeah, I have been building like a Donald dashboard uh, for Dallas AMM and will continue like making it better. Uh, Additionally, I also working for something on like the marketing activities and uh, help Chinese community like uh, grow. Yeah. Yes, I'm looking forward to starting the journey with all of you. Yeah, I'm very excited to be here. Yes. Thanks. Thanks, Leifu. We are we are excited for you to join, and I'm please uh, uh, accept my apologies for not naming that. I I thought it was uh, uh, too much time. Like uh, we are, we are so used to work with you now that <laughs> it seems that we it's been months. But okay, yeah, I was yeah, talking yeah. that. Leifu, you can you can take it from here. Thank you, man. Yes. Yeah. And uh, 
uh, about the AMM performance, uh, I like uh, share the screen to show it. Or do you want to As you wish. like a report? Yeah, I think because it's easier yeah. to show in the with the report and then. Go for it. Yeah, we've yeah. got about. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. I will share my screen. Yeah. So, yeah, screen yeah. sharing should work yeah. for yeah. everyone. Yeah. Just as a note from my side, um, like Leifu, you're the like amazing Superman. Like I, I worked with a bunch of people, but I, I feel like you're my soulmate. Like the first person that actually needs more tasks <laughs> from what he's assigned. So and he does that in in part time. You know, hopefully full time soon. So it's probably one of a, of our most bullish hires to date. And yeah, just amazing to have you. <laughs> Okay, I see uh, it's still running, so I haven't been up. Um, yeah, we have to wait for maybe some time. Let's just pause this. I can see the, the screen. Can you see my screen? Okay, yeah, it's great. Okay, yeah, and uh, uh, now we have like three different pages. It's under my uh, analytics dashboard. So if you visit my name, I think it's quite short, right? Leifu. You see like three with that, that is here mm -hmm. and there's MMM analysis and the user retentions. So let's go through one by one. I think here is the key metrics. So it's uh, more about like how our MMM running mm -hmm. and like the starting from December last year and yeah, until now. So here's like the total trades and total volume and then the unique traders here. And then it, this is like, uh, uh, Profit and loss, uh, so you can see. We can go think through from like maybe the first round. So, yeah, here is the first round. Uh, we with like 20 markets, the uh, AM earn like uh, 22,000, and then the second round 40,000, third round 43,000, and after that, and after that. Uh, we are not using any any round things, so just to make it uh, together. And then there's the two categories. So here is the ongoing. Ongoing means that the market hasn't been resolved. So we have to using the current price to see uh, like the options well, if the options expired and uh, the profit and loss that AMM got. And then here is the completed, which means it's uh, the market resolved. So this number will be changed. Uh, Constantly, like every hour, I think we got like hourly feed from chain chain link. So yeah, and so you can see like uh, as we all know, like the market in past three months is not that good. Um, but AM mm -hmm. is doing super good. I think it's uh, over one hundred percent. Yeah, very strong uh, performance. And we also joke that uh, mm -hmm. we should mirror the AM position. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is the first one, and the second one is more about like uh, how how uh, the users or traders using this AMM and with different uh, dimension, and we can see like the go f going from the asset. So yeah, uh, as we know, like we have like this volume, right? One hundred twenty-six, one million, almost one million, yeah. Uh, and then like the uh, 40 or 45 percent is uh, like ETH. Yeah, this is kind quite common. I think the second one is the Bitcoin. Yeah, uh, this is uh, quite popular. In, I mean, similar pattern could be observed in other markets as well. I think even like Quanta or Lara, you will see the similar things. ETH is the most popular asset everywhere. And yeah, and also uh, most of the traders trading. ETH here, and uh, yeah, and of course uh, with the big volume, the MM win lots about it. Yeah, and here is like the top ten options with this uh, by the trading volume. Uh, the top one is still the ETH around like the seventh of January. Yeah, yeah. So if, if uh, this is like a, a auto generated bot uh, when there were new data then it will be added automatically so so you just need to check if the this is like the this mark so if, if it's a clock here then it means it's still loading the latest query but if it's like this one then means it's already completed so you will see the latest dates yeah. 
And here is about the AM user retention. So, uh, yeah, it's about uh, looking in this way. Then you can see, like, uh, in this week, how many new traders using our AMM. Yeah, and we can see, like, we have a very solid core trader base. So, the trader that if we use our AMM first week will continue to use it like three months. I think 25% of retention is very, very good. Yeah, yeah. And then the, like the the second week, we got like 30 traders, yeah. And then you can see like, because without any like marketing things, and uh, also we changed the trading rewards to a uh, gamification way, then we got like less traders. And of course the market was also affected, but you will get everything, I mean from this kind of thing. So we, we, try, we make it uh, open and transparent, yeah? So here's here's like the the whole situation of the MM. So the performance is good and we have to, can focus on like boosting the volume and having more products. Yeah, I think that as an experimental product, it is super successful. Yeah, um, Pat, if you have any, anything to add? I can. From here, I think. Yeah, um, I just want to say that if any community member uh, wants to kind of provide any feedback or input uh, from trading on the AMM, like the choice of markets and the frequency of market deployment, and which assets would you like to see and what would you like to see changed, feel free to to chat in the community call uh, chat room and let us know so we can use this opportunity to all together like revise the amm experience so far but overall i i really think that the the amm performance is showing great promise even though we are in really limited and secure beta stage with seeded liquidity and yeah i think dan created something that is crazy good so to say like the amm is something that DeFi space has never seen before like nothing similar to this and yeah it's all made possible by the like elegant core architecture of Thales market resolution and stuff like that and with yeah using black shoals and uh, the price impact and that logic is is working really good so far and it will only keep getting better and better and yeah Thank you, Pat. Uh, Dan, do you do you want to, to say some words regarding the AMM, or, or do we move on? Um, yeah, I guess a, a few words, um, at, at least to contemplate what was said so far. Um, I guess we, we're seeing that we got the most volume in like first one or two months, and while we had the direct reward structure, um, but you know, as a matter of fact, we did kind of slow down the, the marketing efforts as well as we were preparing for audit and, and we have a bunch of improvements lined up. And uh, yeah, we were eager to roll out those improvements. Some of them are related in tip 30, like improvements to overall liquidity and, and pricing to, to make it fairer per se, but also to offer just a, a deeper liquidity. Um, so moving forward, we want to allow users to also deposit. You know, we've got that request uh, a number of times. So we might just, you know, go ahead and, and allow people to provide liquidity in a similar way that Lyra does it initially with, with the rounds. Um, yeah, and, you know, we take it from there. Um, we also got a bunch of new potential markets that we can, can create. Uh, Chainlink has added uh, a number of feeds um, that we can leverage. And also we have a TVAP feed implemented on Optimism. So we could actually very soon do markets on, on Lyra or Perp or whatever has a decent enough liquidity on Optimism itself. And I think that's also a yeah, pretty nice feature. Um, we're, we're kind of waiting for a new, new UI uh, that we are very bullish about to be released before we just overflow with, with new markets. We want to have a better markets discovery. Uh, I believe it's on the agenda to kind of give a sneak peek of that awesome new UI. Um, just wanted to share a Twitter bot that was released today that will be printing uh, trades or buys from the AMM, which I think can also be a good educational tool 
because it's showing the condition, the amount, the, the paid amount in SUSD and the potential profit. I think, it, you know, I, I feel that people are kind of um, afraid to just start trading, but, you know, former binary options or current positional options or, or markets or just positional tokens, I think they're rather simple and, you know, having something like this can just show how simple it can get. <laughs> To, to just trade and, you know, potentially make profit. Yeah, I think that that would be it for now. Um, going through through audit right now, it's kind of slow and yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes, but hoping to release those improvements soon. Thanks, Dan. Uh, really appreciate it. And, and of course, a big shout out to, to uh, the bot master apprentice, uh, Milan, that uh, created the Twitter bot. So big shout out to him. Uh, and as you say, Dan, uh, next uh, next step in the agenda, it was kind of a hidden one. It, it wasn't posted in the official uh, brief uh, of the agenda. That's kind of extended now. But uh, it's about the, the new uh, UI, UX and, and the, the, this revamp. Like, so if uh, if you, you are ready to present it, uh, I don't know who's going to do it. Gorstag, uh, Dan, Pat, whoever uh, is going to present it, uh, we are ready for it. Yeah, I don't know if you can hear me. Loud and clear. Yes, yeah, I, uh, loud and I clear. Can... Yeah, I can share my screen. Just tell me if you can see it. Yeah, so Gortak will uh, share his screen, showcase it, and I will try to go through it the best way we can. So, do we have a confirmation? Everyone can see it. Okay. I can see it. I can see it. So, um, here is the new market overview page that we have, and it's uh, generally more streamlined and it's more easy to to browse through relevant markets, to filter through them. And okay, so first thing you notice is on the top we have this new uh, replacement for trending markets from the old UI. Uh, so right now it's filtered. Uh, to show only like most profitable markets with this uh, like carousel where uh, we uh, sort some markets by the maximum potential profit you can get by trading on them so basically cheapest positional tokens you can get currently on uh, Thales marketplace meaning like the biggest potential profit can, can be gained from those and on the top you see the asset name and the position so you for example uniswap down tokens so to say so you buy this token expecting uniswap to be a below a certain price and yeah that's how we sorted this new carousel then down below we have this table so uh, the default view is table but you can use this button to kind of uh, scroll between grid or table view yeah, but uh, just uh, to notice that uh, Grid doesn't have that much information. There is no information in Grid about MM liquidity or prices. Yeah, so Grid is uh, mostly, you know, maybe more visually pretty, but it yeah it doesn't have uh, the bulk of information that the table view has. And on the left of that button, you can see all the currently live assets and markets by sorted by asset and you can click on these select uh, so by clicking on it you uh, toggle it and then like the table will show those assets only but the grade ones grade ones will not be shown so yeah we have this like more streamlined filtering uh, system with clicking on these asset logos and if you remove like uh, a toggle from all of them it will just show every assets and you can sort by asset strike price current asset price time remaining to maturity uh, the amm liquidity showing with green color you see amount of longs available for purchase and by red color you see amount of shorts available for purchase and then we have this uh, new information not visible in the old ui which is price on the left side you have price of up positions and on the right side uh, price of down positions, trading phase, uh, so it's e e either in trading phase or maturing phase. And then we have this nice little chart showing 24 hour change and on the right side, the percentage it actually changed in 24 hours. 
So yeah, this is the market overview. On the bottom, you can still uh, choose two yeah. rows per page, five to 25. And then you have those arrows where you can scroll through pages of all these uh, markets. Yeah, so default sorting is by MM liquidity. So all markets that has MM liquidity will be shown on, on the top when the markets page is opened. Yeah, and yeah, we are pretty happy with this new design and I, I believe, we believe that it will be much better user experience. So, um, going forward, so should we... We have like uh, this new design for getting SUSD. It's just a redesign of the old UI. And yeah. also we have this new user card where you can switch networks between mainnet and optimism for now, soon to add some others. Yeah. And here you can see your balance. I mean, it's pretty straightforward what you can see yeah. here. If SUSD and tail is balanced, you can see the amount of tail is you have in your wallet, amount of tail is you have staked, then tail is token price chart and display your wallet name that you uh, have on, on, your, on our DAP. And yeah, for all of you, uh, psychopaths using light mode on websites, <laughs> there is a button there to, to trigger to show the, the light version of the website. And yeah, this is still um, not 100% done, but it's enough to be you know, presented. You can choose a language between English, Russian, yeah. and Chinese. It's way too white for my taste. Yeah. But yeah, th this is still in development, just. Yeah. <laughs> you would be surprised how people choose the light method. But yeah. <laughs> OK, so going forward, so this is the default markets page. Wait, will you show, uh, sorry, mobile version as well now, or, or like at I, the end? Maybe, yeah, we can, we can show it now. Yeah, we can show it now, either way. So yeah, we are also Hello. pretty excited for the responsive design for mobile view. And yeah, it's looking pretty sweet and it's pretty optimized for all of you hot wallet users from mobile. And yeah, so as you can see. Shout to Arthur, right? Oh yeah, shout out to Arthur. So same functionality, just it's mobile friendly. Almost all of the pages are done with responsiveness. There are some left, but the responsiveness yeah. is there and it's usable. So should we proceed to the trading profile as this is the biggest change that we have in our app? Yeah, so um, we have this new page that is your own trading profile. So yeah, we you have three tabs on the left side, my positions. Just change to the bot. Yeah. As so it has a lot better info. Yeah, more info on that one. So we have my positions, mature positions and history. In my positions, you will see your all of your current live uh, positions that you traded on Teris Marketplace and waiting for like, those are asset, those are your trades that are currently in trading phase. And there is a lot of information for each of those. So you have which asset, uh, what position, is it up or down? Uh, what is the strike price and what is the current asset price? What is the price difference between those like mm -hmm. two numbers, time remaining to maturity? And did it have like that hover? Um, okay, no. yeah, it, it's in uh, two rows now. It's not yeah, just yeah, yeah. maturity they do it cover. That's on the market page. We will show And that. yeah, so you have the amount of positional tokens you own and the type of positional tokens you own. So if it's a red circle, it's a down positional tokens. And it's a, if it's a green triangle, it's up positional tokens you know, inspired by daily surreal positioning. And you have this pretty little 24 hour chain chart and position value. Uh, if the AMM is providing liquidity, uh, like if it's inside the range where it provides liquidity, the position value will calculate your uh, value of your tokens if you are to sell it at the very moment to the AMM. But uh, if the AMM is not providing liquidity, if it's out of range or inside that uh, time interval close to maturity, it will display zero since it, it's, it doesn't have a live price. So yeah, there is a, a table view also, which has like more compact information and fits more, uh, you know, your positions in a certain screen. 
for all of you pro traders that have like a lot more open positions at, at some given moment this is maybe more preferable and yeah you have this circle that shows uh, your SUSD amount in your wallet and claimable SUSD that is if I'm not mistaken the amount of SUSD you can uh, um, how do you say like claim from finished markets from the winning markets yeah, you yeah. can see you can see them in matured positions market here are all the positions that you have in your wallet and they matured or you claim them like yeah maybe it's nicer to see with the with the table view so this is the all, all markets that we can claim all that were claimed and also they are the one that oh bot has a lot but also they are the one that the bot didn't claim or burn and they are still in wallet yeah, i have a lot of rips a lot yeah. of tombstones and, and rips to be honest yeah big fan sure. of the rest in peace status showing your you know wrecked on your tailies <laughs> uh, position like tailies trade so yeah um so same view uh, here you can see on matured positions uh title up there number seven which shows uh how much uh, uh, like how much positions uh, you have to claim how different time. markets and yeah. how much different markets yeah and then not least history of all the trades and all the markets yeah so yeah this trading profile super cool addition to our new that pre-design so what you can do here in history, you can see how much you paid for your options when you bought them. And you can check in my position if those options have more value than you you paid for them. And that means you can already sell them and be profitable on those markets. So that's one of the strategy you can use and not wait for them to, to expire. But that's personal for every, for every trader. And also we didn't cover up the the mm new yeah, redesign so this is the ui the for you know, this is the page for individual markets for when you enter a certain market and want to trade that market so this is the new view you will get and yeah by default it's triggered to amm on top you will be able to to shuffle between order book and amm and we have this new dashboard uh showing uh like current uh, Infor important information for this market and asset you have maturity date showing date and you have like strike price and when you hover over maturity date you can see the time remaining and yeah you have current asset price current bitcoin price for example is 42k.5 and yeah price difference between strike price and current asset price the amount of positions you own at the moment the value of positions you own the current AMM liquidity uh, at the very moment and uh, how does the AMM price uh, this market at a certain moment and yeah this is also a sweet addition where you can click on the similar markets which will uh, show markets that are uh, maturing on the same uh, moment which will uh, you know you can uh, quickly browse through markets that that are similar to to maybe open a few like maybe complex strategies to have like a certain uh, range positions or like iron condors and whatnot by using yeah. that trigger and quickly browsing through similar markets so that there will be no need to go again to the markets page if you want to have the same market it will be changed automatically yeah on the left side it's a like similar feel to the old amm view so you choose if you want to buy or sell positional tokens then you choose do you want to trade up or down positional tokens the amount of positional tokens you want to buy or sell and below you will see these fields showing you uh, the price that the amm is offering for your sells or buys total amount of susd to pay the potential profit in SUSD value and in percentage and the current skew impact that your trade will entail. So yeah, the, down below is the button, approve SUSD and yeah, that's the same spot where you uh, confirm your purchase or sell. 
And yeah, we have these four tabs. The first one is the options price graph, where each like the where it will basically display this market's activity and how uh, prices uh, moved uh, through through the duration of the trading phase of this market and each sell or buy uh, each uh, buy uh, of uh, up and down tokens will be shown on that graph. Maybe there is someone with yeah, no activity, I guess. Yeah, like it's all uh, still uh, like work in progress and yeah. Then there is your activity tab, which will show uh, your information about Let your... me open where there, there is activity. So here we can see the option price actually working. It's the price of options that were bought at, at some time, but yeah, yeah that was covered. Yeah, so uh, your activity, or like what uh, your historical activity around this market, and we have the trading view, the integrated chart to follow the asset price and uh, global recent market activity showing all of the activity around this market. So yeah, and if you, if you can go to options price for a second. So yeah, so you don't get confused why, why is the shorts priced at zero here. It's just uh, it, that's the default view when there were no trades for, for, for shorts, I believe, right? But yeah, so you can see at this market on the left side, it's 39 cents for shorts and 61 cents for longs at the current moment. Also, we have the order book that is in progress. So this is something that we wait for to be finished and do the responsiveness, what is left to to be able to release the new eye. Yeah. I think we covered almost everything. Uh, also, responsiveness is ready for almost all of the pages. Yeah. Let me just refresh. Yeah, we like Taylor's uh, team, front end team, tried to uh, hear as much as feedback from the community as possible. And, you know, try to integrate everything because the UI is meant for our community and our traders and yeah, and if you have any comments on what you saw on this presentation and you know, like any community feedback around what would you like to see integrated or changed or tweaked, feel free to, to, to share with us so we can optimize it even further. But yeah, like we are pretty happy with the result and I think user experience will be increased exponentially with this release. Same. I guess awesome, that's it. Guys. Awesome, guys. Yes, thank you for the presentation. Uh, it's uh, <laughs> I, 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 I really dig it, and I think the, the mobile uh, mobile views are, are really fire. Like I, I think like the Thales developers are, are really uh, have really have done an outstanding job, uh, and also uh, all those in charge of designing the UX and UI. So cool, those guys. I, I, I think it's it's, it's, it's it's going great. So thanks for the presentation. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, we have like uh, Mzur is telling us about how he would love to see um, uh, AMM, like he want to see uh, his total SUSD volume so he can calculate if it's already enough for the extra max reward. And I believe this is already showing in the staking page, right? Yeah, I, I guess he's saying, and it makes sense to show it on the pages where we're actually trading. So, yeah, very good feedback. And, you know, if QA could capture that into a task, we could take it on. So. Uh, I, I, I pin it. I pin it. All the suggestions, I'm, I'm pinning it uh, to the community call, so we review it later uh, with the team. So, yeah, thank you, I'm sure, for that feedback. And, and moving on to the next uh, subject, uh, we, we are going to talk a little bit, well, Pat is going to talk a little bit about the Structurex products uh, research and, and development on, on, on Thales side. Pat, you ready? Yep. Cool, cool, so, sir. Go for it. Okay, so for uh, like past couple of months, we started to brainstorm how we can build on top of Thales, how we can provide maybe some 
advanced strategies, some new products that would uh, not be only a single strike price up or down, but maybe. Um, and yeah, I just want to shout out uh, Igor from Tailis, who initially uh, championed this, uh, like, who started to, to, to think more deeply and to, to, to kind of start mentioning this in our internal communications. And yeah, so basically Igor had idea how we can, uh, with our current architect architecture, we can easily uh, provide users with really streamlined and re really simple to use uh, exposure to, to certain strategies uh, using Tailis uh, marketplace. And these involve like uh, being exposed to a certain price range for example, you can uh, maybe be exposed to a certain range of Ethereum, like between, I don't know, 3000 and 3200 in one week, for example, and stuff like that. So you can already do this manually by uh, going with each market like separately and buying the exact amount of positional tokens for a certain side. You can bet on, uh, or you can uh, position yourself for uh, long volatility position, short volatility position. You can even create a position where you have like this neutral area. Uh, so there is a price range where you are at break even, but above that price range, you will be in profit and below you will be at lost and stuff like that. So these are possible to create already with Tailis uh, manually. But Igor also had an, an idea that we can provide service for users to basically uh, be exposed to this with one tran one transaction or one click which is a really cool idea and then we also started thinking how uh, we can also do a really novel product on top of this that is that i called like tokenized range markets so the basic idea uh, behind this is uh, Imagine you have uh, like a market that is like super similar to any uh, existing Tailis market, but the only difference is that this market doesn't have one strike price; it has through two strike prices. So basically, you have like an ETH market with strike price uh, with strike prices, uh, with, for example, like three thousand and three thousand and two hundred, and basically. The idea is to also have like two outcome market. The market can either mature uh, inside this range or outside this range. And yeah, it's it's basically a similar uh, market resolution as current market since you have only two resolutions. And yeah, uh, and this can even uh, this can even be done by uh, the same mechanism where we have in and out tokens representing the inside range of certain markets and outside range of certain markets. And the only difference here uh, regarding uh, like the architecture and infrastructure is that it, it, it will have two strike prices and it will have uh, two, uh, two um, market resolution events, so to say. So instead of, of uh, the contract checking if the current asset price is above or below uh, the strike price, it, it needs to do, do two checks. So like, for example, if the current asset price is above strike price one and below strike price two, then the market results outside. Or you can do a check, uh, is the current asset price below strike price one or is it uh, current asset strike above strike price two? The market can resolve uh, as you know outside of a certain range. So yeah, and also the most important thing is how would you price these in and out tokens? That's the main question. If you can figure out how to fairly price them, so the AMM can be used to price and provide liquidity for those markets, then like we can do anything. And basically with some help from Aurelia and Spreak, which is our go-to uh, big brain for, <laughs> for stuff like this, um, 
you can actually use the Black Scholes algorithm to calculate the probability of will uh, some asset finish inside a certain range or outside a certain range and you can use the probabilities of individual strike prices basically uh, you take the probability of uh, how do i explain this uh, the simplest so you can take uh, the probability of uh, of uh, one strike price uh, going below and probability of strike price two going above and the sum of, of those probabilities is the total of probability of this market resolving outside a certain range and uh, the probability of the market resolving inside a certain range is a simple like one minus the probability of the outside range resolution and this is really simple to integrate because we already have integrated probabilities of uh, strike one and strike two so this allows us to 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 kind of we we can already say that this, this proposition like passed the feasibility test and if this is integrated this could be like a super novel thing in DeFi space and yeah it's it's a, a, a clear like market fit because there is no other platform in the space offering exclusive exposure to a certain range of a certain asset and it's really elegant and simple and easy to understand so yeah if you hold uh, like in tokens of if between 2 2800 and 3200 uh, you 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 can exercise those for equal amount of susd if if matures for a certain strike date in that range and yeah it's like super easy to integrate also the fact that uh, this exposure is tokenized with both sides mintable with SUSD allows for really easy integration in any third party protocol that wants to use these tokens. And yeah, it's, it's uh, also more fun. Like with these markets, having two strike prices as boundaries is, uh, you know, we have, we can have like a double the amount of photo finishes, you know, because, uh, with current markets, you have one strike price, and if a certain market is close to that strike price, so it's kind of, you know, fun to watch the photo finish. But if you have like two strike prices, you you have like double the chance of of if of it being like fun to watch. And I'm I'm telling you this because you can imagine like maybe Telis Royale that uses uh, like a price range of Ethereum for playing the tail is royale and you can use the black shells algorithm to see exactly what the 50 50 probability of inside outside uh, like market resolution and you can play like tail is royale you can choose like will the ethereum be inside this range tomorrow or it will be outside and yeah it's basically tail is royale around uh, ethereum volatility so yeah those type of fun stuff come to mind and yeah, this idea is AMM compatible. You can use the same Black Scholes algorithm and you can have like this on demand liquidity offering to these markets. It's and traders can have this uh, high risk, high reward additional markets. You can buy like a tight range of like will ETH finish in this $100 wide range in one week or like I think we calculated like if you uh, bet uh, if you position on a range of plus minus 200 from current price of ETH in seven days it gives out like 4x return so you have like 25 percent chance of, of uh, winning on that market if we use the current ETH implied volatility so yeah these markets can be in, in like can uh, provide like high reward but of course with high risk and they are super composable so you can have like um, super crazy strategies with overlapping range markets and combine them with some vanilla uh, like option protocols and stuff like that so yeah my, my brain cannot handle like what are the 
all the possible like strategies that can build around this. But the main thing why I'm excited about this is that uh, this is like the super novel and, and no protocol ever in, like even came to this idea and we can have like all or nothing markets around price ranges. And yeah, so that's basically what we wanted to share this new idea and regarding the timelines and everything it's still in early brainstorm like feasibility test stage but yeah it's important for us for you guys to kind of hear about it and you know to know how uh Taylor's architecture allows for for many like novel products to be built on top of it you know and just to elaborate Thanks, on the Pat. architecture um, I see this as a, a new MM that would be using the existing MM. So it would kind of drive volume into, into the existing MM and, and, you know, have its own separate liquidity. So it might even be considered as a product on top of the existing MM. And yeah. That's basically it. And as Sprig said, this is for the crab market gang. Like the dream come <laughs> true. Yeah. And and uh, thank you, Pat, for, for the presentation. And, and one thing that you say, uh, it, it resonated with me, like uh, just to, to, to reinforce and highlight that say this is a protocol and many things can be built upon, like using using their, their structure. So this is just an, an example of, of things that can be can be created with, 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 with the basics of the protocol. So uh, thanks a lot, uh, Pat. On moving on onto the, our next uh, topic, <laughs> we are clocking in next to one hour. This is going to be probably close to one hour and a half to two hour call. So you better get ready to listening. It's not going to be as, as, as long as the synthetics four hour call, uh, but definitely it's going to take a while. So now moving on to the next uh, subject. We're going to talk about the token migration and sex listings, and uh, Dan is going to uh, talk about that. Uh, Dan, you ready? Yeah, just checking my mic settings because Big P is saying you can't hear me well. Is that a fact? Loud I can't hear you loud and clear, mate. Same. So, loud and clear. so we ban Big P and we move on. <laughs> no worries. Yeah. <laughs> sex listings. <laughs> I'll go ahead and call it sex <laughs> listings, Slavic style. Go ahead, please. Um, all right, so just digressing a bit, you know, token migration, um, something that came to be uh, due to the mishap that, or, or mis sorry, I don't know how to pronounce that, but yeah, the, the mistake we made when we buried about 16 million tokens in an immutable contract, it, it turned out to be a, a blessing in disguise because... You know, a matter of fact, were it not for, for that incident, um, Farmwell would still have his 6% of the token. So just going to be very factual and very transparent about that. Um, however, you know, we, we figured out a way to do it uh, that's completely, you know, seamless to, to everyone by just as we bridge the token to optimism, I don't think many people were even aware that it's underlying a new token. And then once the liquidity was built up on optimism, you know, we just formalized it. <coughs> and now we took it one step further with uh, the first uh, sex listing on MEXC, uh, which in my opinion is uh, a rising uh, sex uh, in some charts. It's like top 10. Um, and, but the, the most important reason why we chose them is that they were willing to support direct optimism transfers and, and you know, deposits and withdrawals. And uh, the latest information we got there is that that should be uh, rolled out tomorrow or on, sorry, it was Friday on or Saturday this week. So towards end of this week, you should be able to deposit or withdraw directly to optimism. And that would be the first token to my knowledge that would have such a support. I, I think Huobi uh, last week they supported it, but this would be the first like altcoin that has direct optimism support. Um, there's another text that's going to list Talis this week, or, or I believe tomorrow. It's the XT exchange. 
uh, it's ranked ranked about 30th. Um, I, I do think it's a, a climber, a riser. If you look at CoinGecko, many tokens have it in top five per volume, that specific exchange. But again, uh, the, uh, the reason why we chose that one is that they are also doing a direct optimism uh, support. So it's our way to also support uh, optimism um, and just, you know, build I guess recognition for for that chain and you know dailies in general. Sorry, was someone about to say something? I think someone unmuted or Leif, you're unmuted. Okay. Uh, no, no. <clears throat> Leif was unmuted all the time. Just go, mate. All good. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. Yeah. Cool, cool. Um, and then uh, something I just you know this is. Uh, a group of people that are very well aligned with Talus and I want to be very, very transparent and, you know, give you all the information firsthand. Um, there is an idea that comes from Kane from Synthetics, and he wants to come in and to propose a, a tip uh, that would stop the retro rewards allocated to, to SNX stakers. Um, this sounds a bit contentious at first. I, I think we should just uh, hear him out. You know, he is the one that actually has the biggest bag from the retro allocation, and he feels like that gives him the credibility to make such a tip. Um, there are some nuances that we probably, you know, should have handled better with that allocation, like not looking full into history where we captured some whales that are have lost a long time ago, their alignment to synthetics, and that's the, the cause of the recent dumps that we do, didn't have the liquidity to absorb what was like six figures worth of dailies being being dumped, dumped by the said whales. Um, and, and also some things happened after the, the tailies token went out, like the other project ecosystems, sorry, the other ecosystem projects, they didn't do same promise that Talis did, with, which was 35% of all supply. They did this narrative where they did like a portion of the initial supply. And, and if you apply that to Talis, Talis did like 70% of supply so far to SNX takers. So I feel that we came through and I feel that this tip has justification. But yeah, just here came out when, when it does come um, and, and, you know, be the... Leave it to council and, and just share your feedback. It's nothing decided. Um, the, it does imply um, that we need to fully deprecate the old token to achieve this because it's immutable. Uh, a way to do that without, again, causing any harm to anyone is to auto-migrate everyone. So everyone who holds old tailies would receive new tailies. So we'll do the migration for them. So no one is impacted in a, in a negative way. But yeah, it's... It's still something to, to be, you know, discussed on the details. So that's what I had for, for token migration. Awesome. Thank you, sir. Um, if anyone has any questions, as always, as you, can, you just can write it in the chat and we'll be saving those all the questions for, for, for the end of the call. If we have time. <laughs> no, no, just kidding. We, we'll have time. Um, so thank you, Dan. And uh, next in, in our agenda, it's, uh, we're, we're going to talk about Thales Royale. And this is a topic that I'm going to be talking with the red. So I'm going to um, start with the, the first half. <laughs> I, I think we, we, we have like a finishing the, the Royale season four right now. I, I don't know if it just finished. Uh, if someone can confirm. Uh, yes, I'm using paper. Can you can you hear it, Big Penny? <laughs> Old school. Okay. So uh, regarding Thales Royale, uh, after the success uh, Thales Royale had in engaging people and showing them the, the power combination of a parimeter market plus a low fee in their instant transactions of optimism. It was decided to run for six scheduled events called Thales Royale Seasons with incentives of 1,000 Thales plus 1,000 SUSD added to the price pool, plus exclusive NFTs. Like uh, these exclusive NFTs for now only have a collectible value, but who knows, My, might be used for something down the line, Tale of Thales, I don't know, no one knows. So, uh, so far we have had four seasons with uh, uh, the fourth one finishing right, like right now. And so far we have uh, on season one, we had seven winners. On season two, we have three winners. Season three also saw three winners. And season four, ending just now, has seen two winners. So, so far we have uh, 15 winners and those uh, are uh, 
advancing to the Royale of Royales. Uh, I, I will be speaking about that uh, shortly, but it's an event that's going to be uh, done after uh, the six seasons uh, are, are finished and it will have a bigger buy-in of 100 SUSD. So those high rollers that want to play one uh, Thales Royale with a little more thrill can do so and just can pay the 100 SUSD buy-in and play this special event of Thales Royale. It will have uh, different NFTs and, and another set of things. But all the winners uh, of the, these six seasons will have a ticket uh, sponsored uh, by, by Treasury that they can join this event for free. So that's another uh, thing for, for the winners. Yes, but 100 SUSD buy-in for Thales Royale. Uh, so we've been listening to the community's feedback and implementing, uh, for example, we implemented the default position choosing on season three. So season three people could uh, choose uh, if they want to be up or down for the first round, but uh, they also have the option to, to, to don't, don't choose a default position. And we still saw people not, uh, not positioning for the first round. And this is, uh, for us, to be honest, it's a, it's a, it doesn't sit us too well. Uh, we, we don't love when people just sign up and, and don't show up. Uh, obviously, it's part of the game and it's, just, it's totally fair and it's within the rules, but we would love if people can, can uh, get more bang for their, their bag and for saying so, and, and they can just uh, uh, have fun while, while at least positioning for the first round. So on round four, we decided to uh, make mandatory the registering uh, along with one position for the first round, up or down. And obviously, it is uh, had people uh, not missing the first round, and I think that was big for, for, for the overall fun of the game and the social component. Uh, another major addition to Thales Royale was the Thales Royale Passes NFTs, uh, which can be minted from uh, 30 SUSD and, and can be, uh, it can be minted on, on, on Thales Royale page on the UI and can be used to join any Thales Royale event with, with uh, 30 SUSD buy-in, like these six uh, seasons that we spoke about. Some people have joined it with the Thales Royale Passes and other app, uh, have paid uh, the 30 SUSD. So we still have... Uh, two more uh, seasons to go. And I would love to everyone, I'm gonna give a few seconds for everyone that hasn't write anything in the chat to write something. I need to see you guys are active now. Uh, if you if you want to and haven't written anything, now it's your chance to, to say that you're active because we're gonna raffle uh, 10 Thales Royal passes between all that write now and that are active. So I will type something and this will randomly select 10 people, those 10 people will have to send me their address afterward and we will send you one Thales Royale Pass for them to register on season five or season six, whichever you want, plus uh, $10 equivalent on ETH, uh, of ETH on optimism. So you ready? Okay, let's see who gets benefit. Uh, that's it. So all those people that uh, are tagged now in the chat, uh, I need for you to DM me your address after the, the community call and you'll get one Thales Royale Pass. Thanks for playing, guys. Um, okay, and now that we have people uh, with their Thales Royale Passes ready uh, to play for the next seasons. And of course, this is a very important thing. The Thales Royale Pass, it's very beautiful, I know. Uh, kudos to our, desi to our, designer, uh, our designers that have really done a, a great job and Red is gonna show something uh, like uh, in a few minutes that will really blow your mind uh, in that same uh, aspect. But also uh, wanted to clarify that once you use the Thales NFT, uh, Thales Royale Pass, it gets burned. So as, as beautiful as it is, you, when, when you choose to, to, to sign up, it, it, it gets burned. So it doesn't show in your wallet anymore. So don't get too attached to it. It's very beautiful, but you, you need to use it for, for it to be, you know, useful. Yeah. So that's what I wanted to say regarding Thales Royale. It's been a lot of fun. Like uh, we, we love engaging with the community and playing around, you know, and all the friendly trust talk. I think it's, it's great, but it's also uh, opened it up uh, into research and development of innovations in, in, in regards to this. So, uh, Red, I, uh, do you want to take the word and continue? Yeah, thanks, Monkey. Uh, yeah, so hi, everyone. Uh, Red here. So, yeah, thanks uh, for introducing uh, Dee. Uh, so basically, I'm going to be talking about the new product that we have in research and development right now, still concerning Tilly's Royale and touching on NFTs. So, um, Hinky Punk and Christina, two girls of the protocol DAO, has been really killing it there. And uh, the contracts for this are entering testing. So it's pretty exciting. 
Um, so basically, we're developing a Royal Passport that will allow players to uh, trade their ongoing uh, Royale position. Um, so that will be a custom NFT on Optimism, and it will be an evolving NFT as well. Um, so you'll sign up for Telly's Royale, right away you'll mint the NFT, it will be in your wallet, it will look clean and unused. Uh, you can trade that right away if you want um, and you set the price right just like any nft on the marketplace and then what happens is when you start positioning in your first round um, then we'll have uh, a stamp appearing on the passport telling us what position you chose i'll be sharing some design here pretty soon um, yeah and then basically throughout the entire while we move and add stamps depending on the position and these will be evolving um, so right if you chose up in round three it'll show up up in round three on the um, on the design and then at the bottom of the passport we'll have also meta that will be evolving based on uh, the older the timestamp the round of the royale we're in and the last position chosen by the user um, and eliminate eliminated position like so when you're eliminated from the royale will have a different uh type of nft um image than an ongoing passport and the winner passport will also look different so i'll be sharing them in the chat right now the design yeah so here's what it's looking like at the moment so you guys can see right uh it looks pretty great. So Christina did that. Um, so round one, stamp one. It looks awesome. Will will be red, for example. So that means that the person chose a down position that round. So meaning that uh, if you're in round three, you chose an up position, and you're seeing the market going down, and you're like, no man, I'm not, I'm not feeling it. You could go on Kizotic Marketplace, list your NFT for let's say 15 SUSD. Someone might buy it, thinking they might be. Uh, market might recover and then they buy it and then it's their way out position now not yours anymore um so they can keep going with your uh way out right so i think that's pretty exciting um so we got like kind of evolving steps uh, the second image there the third image is a uh, shown of a eliminated passport so that'll be just basically trash in your wallet you're welcome to burn it um thinking of having a little trash on ui for you to burn your uh, eliminate passport as well and finally the winner nft all nice and gold with some beautiful olive branches in the background uh, that will allow any older to claim a, a royal winning of the according season so i think uh, that's pretty awesome that was an idea from pad and uh, soon to be completed uh, when we started, we weren't sure if it was even possible. Hinky Punk's been killing it with the contract. She's been looking at evolving NFT contract and really made it all possible. So pretty stoked there. And obviously, you guys seeing it, the design looks pretty sweet. Uh, let me just on the recording screen show them as well. Uh, sorry. So uh, I'll just be studying them. So that's what they look like again. So eliminated passport winning and the evolving NFT here. Uh, that was re for the recording. Uh, yeah, so pretty excited to uh, have this live. We'll keep you updated guys on this. Uh, and yeah, credit to the the protocol Dell girls team. Pretty, pretty strong killing it. It's pretty, pretty dope to see. Uh, so yeah, that brings me um, to our next thing in the, the agenda here um, so this Friday we got something pretty exciting going on for the community uh, so our first uh, eSport tournament um, uh, so for this first edition of the tournament right uh, we're hosting a Valorant tournament with uh, four teams participating for uh, DAOs that you guys are well aware of we got Lyra, The Edge, Quenta and obviously Tailies uh, which is the favorite team um, on the grand prize for this uh, tournament we have 5,000 tailies up for grabs and every part spinning player is getting a YL NFT pass so that's pretty fun just for part spinning you're getting a little goodie even if you're not winning um, there's still spot open especially in the 
Lyra's team at the moment. So if you guys want to sign up, there it's the last day today to sign up. Um, after that, tomorrow we're locking in the teams and uh, moving forward with these teams for the tournament. So all of this will be streamed on our Discord. Um, kind of similar to our community call right now, we'll be sharing the screen uh, from a Twitch stream that will be hosted by Bert, Rock from Lyra and Quinta. So from there, we'll, you'll be able to watch it on his um, Twitch stream or either on their Discord, you'll have a choice there. And uh, we'll have myself and Jitsi uh, voiceover of the tournament. So we'll be just analyzing the, the game as it goes and just keeping you guys entertained in the intermission and so on. So starts tomorrow, Friday 25th, 2 p.m. UTC first game. The final will start at 4 p.m. Uh, UTC. Um, yeah, and then the final will be a best, uh, best out of three. Um, and right, their goal again for uh, with this tournament is really to increase the gaming community in the synthetic ecosystem, especially uh, in Tailey's um, Discord. Uh, we really want to start building a community there. We think it be um, it has a lot of good uh, stuff to bring. Uh, also, get better at hosting the, such tournaments, right? So this will be a first for us. Uh, hopefully, as we move forward, right, we include more games, more platforms. Uh, more crossplay, all the gaming region. So that's a big, big issue right now, right? Is latency and including everyone as we grow the community. We'll include all the regions and all the games, all the platforms. And lastly, the last goal with this tournament, uh, well, is something pretty exciting, and it's a demo of our uh, exotic market. So. For the tournament on the 25th, everyone that's not playing will also have a chance to participate in the tournament by. Um, <laughs> well, that's the rule, Gorstack. Uh, so, um, the the demo uh, of the exotic market will be live on the 25th. We'll have one market there for users to um, make decisions on. And uh, on this point here, I'll uh, let uh, Gorstack and uh, Dan uh, talk about uh, our new product, the exotic market. Right there we go. Time. Right on. Time. <laughs> <laughs> well, then you, you start well. The, the bells go off. <laughs> yes, of course. Uh, well, thanks. Uh, so, exotic markets. Uh, you you are already familiar probably with uh, this idea from um, Telis Protocol. So, the idea behind this is to. Uh, step up from this binary thing and uh, to create um, some platform where everyone can create some type of markets and uh, 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 to enable um, uh, users to uh, place a bid uh, on uh, uh, those markets. Um, uh, in previous period we had a lot of uh, requests for, from um, uh, people to create uh, some markets, but unfortunately it, uh, uh, it uh, wasn't supported on uh, Chainlink, so on this way uh, we will uh, have flexibility to create any type of markets and uh, to allow people to create uh, those markets. Uh, I will share my screen to show current progress on this. Second. Mm. Do you see my screen? Yeah. Yeah, VIP page is open. Yeah. Okay, yes. So uh, everything regarding uh, this exotic uh, Positional markets is is described under tip 28. Uh, so I won't go into details regarding that. Uh, so uh, stop talking and uh, show us uh, some uh, some UI sneak peeks. So uh, also on uh, this uh, uh, this part, designers uh, also uh, had a really good job. So kudos to Igor on this. So this is uh, our landing page regarding exo exotic markets. And when you click on uh, launch, launch uh, the app, you will see 
uh, this uh, uh, market overview page. So uh, the, uh, you can see this is on testnet and uh, this is some kind of preparation mm -hmm. for a uh, demo on Friday for this um, uh, eSports tourney. So everyone can create uh, markets with different tags. I will create one market to show how it uh, looks like. So the idea here is first to have some kind of question or uh, uh, base thing, base thing of, of the market. So, for example, a price on hmm. so uh, for data source, uh, 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 someone who creates market will put. Uh, data source, I will put CoinGecko, but it's not really impo important right now. So, for example, let's, let me... This is just as, a, uh, as examples, so, and more mm -hmm. than the idea is to have right now up to five positions, so you can uh, uh, add five position, but that is configurable on contract side. And I will select today's date and put this time. Uh, we, we will have this ticket option and uh, open bid option ticket uh, is uh, with with uh, fixed uh, ticket price so i will put this uh, uh, 10 usd we created on uh, this test network some exotic usd just for tests so and i will select the tags for easy search later Get met the mask. So, this is market ready for uh, placing uh, a bid. So, uh, for example, I will select some bid to place here, and I will buy a ticket for this this market. Mm -hmm. Right now, um, pool size and uh, ROI is uh, set to zero because there is no bits here. But once I uh, place a bid, I will see. Yeah, it's basically like Telus Royale mechanism where the winning uh, position gets the entire prize pool, right? Yeah. Well, yes, yes, and it's yes, it's split uh, between users who uh, place a bid on uh, that position. So, uh, and here I have this market, so everyone can select. For example, this NBA NBA MVP also has some uh, bids here, and Roy also. You can withdraw uh, at any time, but there is fee of about six percent for this. And uh, the, uh, if something is not okay with market, if uh, a question is not set right or some position is not okay, everyone can open dispute on that market. So I, I think I have some example of that. So this is one market that is not well defined and uh, th uh, there is dispute on this market and uh, there is Oracle cons council which uh, uh, has five members and they decide uh, uh, they decide on uh, this dispute should this this market uh, be uh, rejected uh, or should be this this dispute uh, should be rejected so uh, that is in short we have filters uh, if your option is winning option you can claim your winnings here and uh, you you you, uh, you can play with this on Friday when we create some market for this eSports uh, uh, e tourney. So uh, that is the idea behind that and also to hear feedback uh, from community on this. Also soon we will have nominations for K 
can, uh, Oracle Council, all, all details you can find uh, again under this tip. And that's all. Amazing. Uh, it looks really great and, and the community seems to really love the colors and the design. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm amazed too. I, have, I haven't seen it in a while and, and this is, is getting, getting real sweet. Thanks Vlad and, and for the presentation and thanks, thanks Pat too for, for the pointers. Uh, okay, that was it regarding exotic markets, right, guys? Well, uh, I guess... Uh, uh, do you want to add anything? You know, um, well, I think uh, Vladan covered most of it, but as, as he uh, wrapped up, uh, I, I think it makes sense to kind of start with the Oracle Council nominations, uh, because from what we are seeing, it's, it's very close, maybe a couple of weeks away from being released. Uh, we tested it uh, also with disputes, the mechanism is there, so um, the most important part of, of exotic markets, as Thales does them, is education for market creators so that they don't lose bonds on you know, not being w well educated on how they need to, to phrase the markets, you know, what would, would the rules be, and all of that is under the jurisdiction of um, Oracle Council, so yeah, I think maybe pe pending a, a final review of, of the tip or you know, I, I think there was some feedback about potentially splitting it up, so just need to get my head back into that. We should probably put it to vote and open up uh, nominations for Oracle Council. Yeah, soonish. Awesome. Yeah, thanks, Dan. Uh, yeah, I think it, it, it makes sense and, and it, uh, it's uh, really moving in, 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 in a right direction and a very good pace. So. I'm Pretty pumped for it. Okay, so uh, uh, talking about pumped <laughs> about things, um, the next topic it's uh, it's a really big one, and and this is uh, rela related to uh, a, a parimutuel sport markets with the uh, changing feeds. So this uh, topic will be covered by Dan. You ready, mate? <laughs> yeah, always for sports, always. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, I, I'm not. <laughs> yeah, go for it. <laughs> um, so. You know, Chainlink surprised us very, very nicely a few weeks ago by telling us they delivered um, a full set of, of these sport feeds on Optimism. I believe there is a list of like 15 sports to choose from where you can get a list of upcoming games uh, when they start and then you can query the games to get a resolution or, or you know, what was the end result. Um, that's pretty amazing. It's really exactly what we were looking for. Um, and then we started, you know, tapping into that, building straight away because we eagerly awaited. We realized that we could reuse the framework we created for exotic markets, so that saved us uh, some of the development time. Uh, it's already progressing, progressing really well, uh, at least on the backend side. Um, so it would use the the framework to create markets as it is uh, for exotic markets, but the resolution will be done by Chainlink, uh, and that means that there will not be a delay per se like with exotic markets we use exotic uh, we use an optimistic approach which means that you might need to wait from like 4 to 24 hours depending if there's a dispute or not but yeah you would definitely need to wait until you can claim your winnings uh, whereas with chainlink basically you can get it as soon as the game ends as long as someone calls the you know the the job from chainlink for it we will have our own bots creating markets and resolving them and we'll make sure it's done, you know, as soon as possible, but maybe not really on the same minute because, you know, it, it does cost. So we need to optimize to to resolve the games, you know, very soon and provide a good UX, but also not be just throwing link on, on getting, um, yeah, on, on querying when it's not ready to be resolved. Um, We'll start with, at least right now, we are coding for NBA and for uh, football or, or soccer for uh, UEFA Champions League and uh, Pre Premier League. I'm hopeful to have this ready in about a month because we will be, we will build a new UI for this. So exotic markets will remain just the optimistic result, exotic markets, but sports markets will be a decoupled UI. Um, so there is you know, some work to prepare the front end. Um, as I said, hopeful to be ready in about a month. Uh, by that time, I'm, I think the NBA season and, and you know soccer season will still be ongoing, but 
you know, as I previously mentioned, there's a list of 15 sports available or so, so definitely can add more sports to, to the existing framework. Um, we will also do some uh, market making. It will indeed be very mutual, so, you know, people decide the, the liquidity and the pot and, and the odds and the ROI per position themselves, but we will kickstart kickstart every market with some liquidity because Chainlink will also deliver us the odds when we create the, the games. Um, but it will, you know, down the line, we are hopeful to even build AMMs around all of this. But for that, we need real-time feeds on the odds because, as you know, odds change all the time. Like when a player is injured or a game time decision in NBA and then you find out like on, on warm up if he plays or not, the odds suddenly change. So we need uh, an, a feed, like you have a feed for ETH, ETH price or Bitcoin price. So anyway, just saying that that's something that will take more time because it's more costly, but you know, initially we'll kickstart with some liquidity based on the initial odds. And yeah, really looking forward to this myself. Awesome, man. And I'm sure like all the Thales community, the Titans, uh, sport fans are, are really eager to try this. And of, of course, with the chaining fits, it's uh, very promising to see how, how they are uh, developing things and at the pace they are moving. Like It looks like they, they started get, getting uh, like uh, quicker and faster with their responses around this. So, yeah, pretty cool stuff. Thank you, Dan. Um, Okay, if everyone has any questions so far, just remember that you can post it in the chat and we will be answering uh, those at the end. We have uh, a few saved, I think. Uh, yeah, the sports ball enjoyer, right, Sprig? For all the sports ball enjoyers. Okay, and uh, we're, we are, we're closing in, in the kind of last topic uh, b before we get into the question, uh, question section. And this is about a possible multi-chain uh, future for Thales. And this topic will be covered by Pats. Mate, you ready? Just a second. Yes, no worries. Let's see if we have uh, more questions. Okay, no, so, just, yeah. be, just be penny trolling. Go for it, man. So, yeah, we have like a few developments regarding, uh, just as the monkey said, possible multi chain future. So also Dan can uh, can uh, compliment me on this. Uh, we had a few. Uh, we had an open line of communication with Polygon, and we are doing uh, really good progress around uh, eventually, like in a really short term, deploying our main product and uh, basically our protocol to Polygon. And yeah, basically they also uh, agreed to uh, together with us uh, cooperate on incentives on our launch with uh, some certain sum of Matic tokens. So we will probably uh, deploy like on Polygon really soon and have uh, some sort of incentives at the very beginning and try to draw in uh, many like new users and yeah like polygon is kind of more mature than optimism at this very moment and yeah it, we are pretty excited about it to uh, gain some more exposure to tailies try to get some more uh, like permanent like users of tailies on board and just to you know, try to get a feel of how uh, Thales can eventually have a, a, a multi-chain future. And also uh, from, from the developer side, uh, we are kind of uh, focusing on optimizing Thales protocol. So it allows us to have a simple deployment on every like EVM possible for every EVM compatible chain. So, but yeah, it's it first in line is Polygon, and yeah, we are pretty happy with how uh, like the organization with them is is turning out, and yeah, and also maybe also important to maybe kind of relay to the community, we were also approached 
by ZK Sync. And yeah, they were interested in Thales and trying to kind of push us to, to, to explore deploying on ZK Sync testnet at the moment and kind of be ready for mainnet deployment. There was also a mention of a possible like grant. And yeah, I guess they were interested because we already have like an L2 deployment experience. And yeah, like we are definitely uh, exploring to, to kind of be on multiple chains and offer our AMM markets and Thales Royale uh, uh, to different chains and to be exposed to different communities. Uh, there are a lot of intricacies there. Like at the moment, we use SUSD as the main collateral. But if we are to kind of go multi-chain, we need to explore like what is the most feasible use of collateral for each individual chain and those type of stuff. But yeah, where like if SUSD has sufficient liquidity on a certain chain in the future, like this is our go to, you know, alignment to synthetics and yeah, so um, and if I'm like missing out to spilling all the beans regarding polygon deployment, like Daniel can maybe jump in and, and, and talk a bit more. We, we, we still don't have a hundred percent like details set in stone with this uh, deployment, but yeah, we are, we are really <laughs> happy with it. Yeah, I, I appreciate you trying, you know, to, to not spill the beans, but I'll go ahead and, and do it. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, not, not all of it, but anyway, the, the talks with Polygon started around uh, New Year's. Um, they are great fans of, of synthetics. Uh, I, I don't know if you caught it, but they even wrote a proposal, I think, to this uh, synthetics uh, discourse uh, research about basically inviting synthetics to, to come to Polygon and offering support. Um, they relate the same to me, like uh, they would love to have, you know, dailies as, as a synthetics ecosystem project. And it's just simple to start with something like Thales because um, yeah, at least at the time, the debt merge was not ready. And I think there are uh, nuances to kind of having since on, on Polygon which from what I hear is also something that might happen soon. But anyway, so they, they've showed support. We started talking. Uh, there were some things we needed to get out of the way first, like the token migration. But now we are very close. We are testing uh, the DAP and the contracts on, on Polygon. Um, it's, you know, if you if you're, if everything is working on optimism, it, it seems like it's going to work on, on Polygon as well, just, you know, switching it to Matic token. Um, so we should be ready to go uh, in a in a few in a couple of weeks, something like that. Uh, we agreed a, a grant from their end of uh, something in in the range of 25k worth of uh, Matic token. We want to do a promotion of of like a trading competition, which we haven't done in a while. Um, yeah, to to just make a big bang on the release with Tailis and Matic rewards, um, and just generally talking about how we see multi-chain um, when when a product that we build is mature enough which we feel amm is at this point after three months of beta we can go to another chain so we would be starting with the amm uh, markets and potentially tailis real which also is kind of already mature and, and battle tested and then you know we take it from there. So exotic markets and sports market would start on, on optimism, all the staking, all the token stuff stay on optimism. But yeah, when, when we have mature products and there's additional incentive, and of course with Polygon, it's not so much about the grant, it's more about the, the user base. Um, and, and you know, that said, uh, optimism is also. And yeah, just also to point out that uh, we also started discussing having uh, to uh, we right now we manually uh, create each market and just recently we started using like this script and everything but for multi-chain deployments we also started uh, discussing how to automate like market creation how to standardize um, market creation and 
those type of stuff. So yeah, it's a work in progress, and we will all um, uh, share results soon. But yeah, we will also have an uh, like an automated AMM market creation scripts, hopefully. And yeah, and if I'm saying again, like all calling all tailies traders out there, if you see any uh, kind of if you see that uh, the AMM markets that we manually started creating recently are lacking some uh, range of strike prices or maturity dates, we're doing like bi-weekly and weekly markets at the moment, uh, feel free to share. All feedback is appreciated and welcome and will be beneficial for future automation of the market creation choice, so to say. Awesome, awesome, awesome! Really, really nice way to round it up, Pat. And and thanks, uh, uh, Pat and Dan, for for this uh, presentation and for the alpha. <laughs> really nice uh, alpha, Dan. We we'll cut it out of the recording. No worries. Uh, okay, so <laughs> I thought Kane leaked it last <laughs> night. To be honest, there was this Twitter space. I listened to a bunch of it, but maybe I, I assume there will be leakage of the token. <laughs> No, no worries. It'll, it'll stay between the 45 of us that we are here. The recording will never see. <laughs> no, just kidding. Okay, uh, I, I think we have covered like a, a lot of stuff here. Uh, we, we've been into this for one hour and 40 minutes. Uh, if you have uh, anyone in the community, if you have any questions regarding what we talk about, like any anything specific that you didn't catch, you can you can ask now. Uh, I'm not seeing any questions, so if I don't see any question pouring in the next minute. I think we, we have uh, kind of covered everything else. Like uh, while we wait for questions, any anyone from the Cori contributors uh, maybe want to want to say something? Maybe we missed something or any comments? Okay, I think everyone is kind of exhausted too because of all the alpha, of course. So yeah, big penny, physically exhausted by this call. Okay, so guys, uh, I wanna thank, uh, wanna thank uh, everyone that uh, joined this this long call. I think it's one of the longest that we we've had so far. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna try and have a, a calls uh, like a scheduled calls, um, not not too distant uh, between each other, like not to to have three months without a, a community call like this one. So we're we're gonna try to to have these ones uh, like a every one month or every two months at most and obviously in between all the Thales Council governance calls that we we we, we think are, are really a, a lot of value add for those that are interested in governance. So thanks uh, to the Cori contributors that are uh, presented today and obviously to all the Cori contributors that are in the call too but didn't speak because they, they do all the work behind behind the scenes. Uh, thanks to the Thales Council and of course thanks to the Thales community, the mighty titans for supporting us and, and for being with us and in this like very long but but very fun journey so that's it thank you guys and see you soon bye bye thank you guys thanks everyone thanks everyone stick around bye. for some chill tunes <laughs> yeah go for it Pats.